You got it? It's pretty good. Let me fix my hat, okay? Sure. It's going to be a second. Mm -hmm. Ready. You're all set? Why do you cover the board game? The, the whole thing is... Now you're set. Hi, I'm Giancarlo. And I'm Felicia. And this is our review of... System! No, versus! Versus system! There's a big VS! The versus system! I thought that was a nice logo! <laughs> Take on the role of your favorite Marvel superhero or supervillain and knock out your opponents in a super showdown for supremacy. Each player will have a 60 card deck and for this review we've used the recommended build for each faction found at the end of the rulebook. They'll place it on the right side of their player area and this area will also have three imaginary rows made up of their front row, back row and resource row. Players will choose one of the four main characters for each faction and place their level 1 card in either the front or back row and their level 2 card aside. All tokens should be placed in their appropriate pools and each player will draw 7 cards, you'll determine the first player and you'll be ready to play. Each turn consists of 4 phases in this order. Draw, Recovery, Build and Main Phase. During the draw phase, the active player will draw 2 cards unless it's the first turn of the game in which case, the starting player draws no cards. The recovery phase is where you turn over any stunned character, more on this later, and put all the characters in the ready position by turning them right side up. The build phase is broken down into three sub-steps that also must be taken in order. They are resource step, recruit step, and formation step. There are four types of cards in Versus System. They are main characters, supporting characters, location, and plot twist. When doing the resource step in the build phase, you may choose to play location face up or any one card face down in the resource row. The amount of resource you have will determine how many recruit points you have. This will be important in the next step of the build phase, recruit. To recruit a character, you need to spend or have recruit points that equals or is above the cost listed on the upper left corner. You can play as many characters as you can afford, but recruit points are spent as you play characters. It doesn't say in the rule book, but as a reminder, you can turn the resource sideways to show you used it. And lastly, in the build phase, is the formation step. Here, you can rearrange your characters by moving them how you want from the front row and back row. Placement will matter when we enter combat soon. This brings us to the next phase, the main phase. The main phase is where you'll take any number of attacks one at a time with your ready characters against your opponent's unstunned characters. To do so, you need to exhaust the character by turning him sideways. Front row attackers will be making melee attacks against the enemy's front row. Back row characters can only attack if they have this symbol for range. More on this later. When making an attack, look at the character's strength and defense. If its attack is equal to or higher than the opposing character's defense, they'll stun him and give him a wound. If they take wounds equal to or higher than health, that character is KO'd and goes into your discard pile. If your main character is ever KO'd, you lost the game. Attacks occur simultaneously so it's possible for characters to stun each other. Getting back to ranged. A ranged character can attack from the back row to the opponent's front row. The opponent's character in this case only strikes back if the character themselves have the range icon. Flying characters can choose to attack the opponent's back row from their front. If the opponent does not in turn have a character with flying in his front row to block him, and lastly, a character who has both flight and range, like Iron Man for instance, can attack from the back row to the opponent's back row, if again the opponent does not have a flying character in the front row to block him. Of course, if there's no one in the front row, you can attack the back row freely. Lastly, you can choose to do a team attack. To do so, you choose two characters in the same row with the same affiliation listed on the right top corner to attack one character. The defender will choose which of these two characters will receive wounds, if any. Before moving to the damage step in combat, the active player may choose to play some plot twist. These cards are like combat tricks. If not, the opponent may play one, and then again, in turn order, the players may play one, one at a time, until both players pass. 
The effect of each card triggers as it's played. What's important to note is when a card can be played. Some will say main, which means you can only play during the main phase, combat, which can be played during combat on your turn, or if they have this symbol, it can be played during any player's combat. Some characters will have superpowers as well that can be triggered during certain phases, as in the plot twist cards. Difference is some of these require the right resource paid to trigger, whereas plot twists are played for free. To pay for one of these powers, and again keep in mind the timing of when these can be played, you'll have to turn a location card that provides that specific resource face down in your resource row. These will still count towards your recruitment points, but will no longer provide the source of energy unless it's turned face up again with other abilities. When you are done attacking with as many characters as you wish, your turn ends and play passes to your opponent. There's some specific rules we need to look at. First is leveling up. When your main character's level ability is met, you'll place an XP token on your level 2 character. If ever these XPs reach the number in the bracket of your level 1 character, remove him and replace the card with the level 2 version, still keeping the original card's orientation and tokens. Newer versions will have stronger stats and new ability. There is also a uniqueness rule, which means you can only ever have one same named character, main or supporting version, on your side at a time. If you play one with the same name, you must discard the first. You can instead do what is called a power-up. To do so, simply discard the card during your main phase or, as any combat ability, to put a plus one, plus one counter on the same named hero on that field. If you ever run out of cards from your deck, play continues until one main character remains or the one with fewer wounds wins. So Versus System is very much like a second edition to the previous game with the same name. I haven't played the first version, but I'm sure nostalgic gamers who will, will want to have a go at this. And the Marvel brand, especially with the movies and how Upper Deck is doing extremely well with the Legendary series, Versus will have a strong appeal to new gamers as well. What's more is that the game offers a quick, streamlined, simple gameplay, yet is infused with lots of tactics, making it easy to pick up with almost limitless combinations. You can play as one of the four teams faction, Avengers, X-Men, Guardians of the Galaxy, or Villains for easy team attacks, or you can custom build your deck so all your abilities and powers require specific type resources for easier access, so pro point again for replay value. And if you don't want to break your head doing deck constructions, we've play tested all the deck and they are fairly balanced. If and if luck is on your side. They tried to mitigate this with a one-time mulligan at the beginning of the game, meaning you can reshuffle your 7-card hand to draw a new one, and a 2-card draw phase, but it still remains a card game, and you can be dealt a crappy hand. But speaking of the cards, the artwork is as much as expected from the Marvel brand, and it's great. Unfortunately, the production quality is not on par. These cards started getting damaged real quick, so do sleeve them right away, and some of these tokens got damaged as we tried punching them from the punch sheet. I will grant one thing Upper Deck does super well and that's theme. All characters, supporting or main, have their own style of play. Gomorra is deadly, Captain is a leader, and Deadpool breaks the fourth wall. You really recognize each hero and how they play. Familiar tactical card game with only some little original mechanics, so only half a point here. Versus system is solid. It's going to be interesting to see what new expansions will come out and how it affects the game. Versus System gets a 7.5 out of 10. It's cool, you have Spider-Man versus like... Yeah, or see, there, there's, there's, you know, factions. You got the, the villains, you got X Men, the Avengers, and and, uh, and you like bam, you lost Galaxy. four points, or like bam. Well, you lost they five attack, points. they attack. Uh, bam, you attack me, bam. It's cool. I like that. Keep it up, keep up the good work, guys. <laughs> <laughs>